praising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit all right get ready it is. Do you know? It's time to connect to God together by singing and moving to music. Even though sometimes I may not feel like dancing or singing, it's not about how I feel. God deserves all of our worship all the time. He deserves our best. He deserves all of our thanks. So get up and let's connect to God together. Rock, 
As we give our tithes and offerings to God, let's check out this postcard we got from our friend Nathan. I thought he asked a wonderful question about why we do what we do. Do I have to give an offering? If I don't give, will God not love me as much? Hmm. Well, let's look at it this way. Mike, have you ever given a gift to someone? Yep. I gave a basketball to Luke. 
Did he make you give him a gift? No, I wanted to because Luke does so many nice things for me. So I wanted to give back to him. It was a way I got to say thanks. That's exactly why we give an offering to God. Not because we have to, but because we get to. To thank Him for all He has done. God is so good to us. He's given us everything we have. Family, friends, the air we breathe, absolutely everything. Giving an offering is one way to say thanks for everything He's given us. And nothing you ever do or don't do will ever change how God feels about you. He loves you no matter what. Just because you give doesn't mean God loves you more. God has given us so much that we love when we have a chance to give back to Him. Thanks for your question, Nathan, and thanks for giving. Because giving is a great way to say, say thanks, thanks and, and put, put God, God first. first. the Rock Children's Church with my funds because of the involvement, engagement, and all of the exciting activities they have for our children. Hey, Rock Twins, guess what? It's game time! Hello, Rock Friends. Before we go into our lesson on discipleship with our friends from Connect HQ, I wanted to pause and stop and share a word of encouragement with you as well as your parents and or whoever may be watching with you on this broadcast. Do you know that this weekend or on tomorrow, we celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday? And that's very important because he was a Christian, uh, African-American preacher, pastor that stood for justice, and that stood for freedom and that even cost him his life so that your parents our grandparents and when you get old enough will be able to have the right to vote and so that's why we celebrate him because he stood for freedom and also this week we're going to be inaugurating a, a new president on January the 20th and it's very historic in our country because this will be the first time in our American history where a woman will be the vice president and then also even more historic is that this will be a woman of color which will be our vice president but all of this was made possible because of the sacrifices of people like Dr. Martin Luther King who stood for freedom and so before we go into our, our message on discipleship I want to pray with you and your parents or whoever's broadcast who's watching this broadcast Lord God we we thank you today, Father. We thank you that you are a God that loves us. You know us. You know our needs, oh God. And God, I pray that you'll lift up and encourage every family that's watching God. Let them know, Father, that, that you have a purpose and a plan for their lives. God, let them know that you have not forgotten about them. I pray that you cover, keep, sustain, help them bless our children, God, and help them be lifted up and encouraged to know, Lord, that you are working on and for their behalf. God, we thank you that you are the ultimate freedom fighter, that you have given us freedom, you have liberated us, God, and now we can be in your kingdom. So God, we pray for your peace that surpasses all understanding to be with all our families that are watching across the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus chose 12 disciples to follow him while he lived on earth. So what is a disciple? And can we still be disciples today? A disciple is a learner. This month, Rock Friends, you will learn that being a disciple is so much more. He is not only our teacher, but he is our Lord. Jesus still invites you to be a disciple and choosing to follow him means that we can have a big impact on the world. Enjoy this week's lesson.
Well, howdy, partner. Oh, hey. Mike, mm. come on. What? Are we not going to talk about your hat? Oh, my super sweet cowboy hat? Nah, this is nothing new. I wear it all the time. I've known you for a while. This is the first I've seen of this hat. Okay, uh, well, I heard from a reliable source that everybody's wearing them. Can't be everybody. I'm not wearing one. Hey, Mike, were you making that? Oh, hey, Doc. Mm -hmm. Oh, brother. yippee ki yay yikes We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links. Make the connection. And you never know what might happen. My name is Dot, and this is how we learn to make more disciples. Okay, even the guys downstairs are wearing cowboy hats. What's going on around here? That's awesome. People are actually following my example. But you're not wearing a cowboy hat. No, but I told people that are listening to my podcast to wear them. What on earth is a podcast? Okay, it's the coolest thing. It's like my own personal talk show. So you watch it? No, it's like a radio talk show. People listen to it. I talk into this microphone for two hours about whatever I want and then upload it to the internet. Two hours? Yeah, I thought that was a long time too, but I guess people need something to listen to while they're folding clothes or doing the dishes. Check it out. I took Alyssa's advice. That's the name of my podcast, Alyssa's Advice. I like to listen to it while I'm clipping my toenails. I can't wait to hear what you recommend next. Can I get a little preview? Let's just say I've got a full list of things. Why are you suddenly listening to everything Alyssa says to do? Because she seems like she knows what she's talking about. I mean, she talks about it for two hours. This will give us something to do while you wait for your next instruction. It's a message from our field office in Montana. Hey, Connect HQ, it's Field Officer Seth here in Bozeman. Now, my good friend Stella here has got a question that needs your expertise. So, Stella, why don't you tell them what you told me? I love going to church. I always invite my friend to church, but she always says no. What am I doing wrong? Well, we've got some ideas over here, but I wanted to see what sort of links you could find over there. And hey, thanks for your help. Aw, poor Stella. It's not her fault her friend says no. Some people just don't want to go to church, and some people have a really good reason why they can't. Making disciples isn't always easy or fun. But I bet we can find some links to help encourage Stella to keep sharing her love for church. For starters, she should get a hat like this one. It'll help her feel more confident. Yeehaw. As you know, my dear podcast listeners, I try to keep you up to date with everything you should be wearing, what you should be listening to, and now, what you should be saying. It's all very exciting. I have Rodney here from our Skit Vision group to go over the words that everyone is saying these days. Rodney, do you want to go over the first word? Absolutely. Our first word is Dunny. So I use this word whenever I'm close to finishing something, as in this podcast is almost Dunny. Our second word, Jumbo. It means tremendous or significantly great. That's so Jumbo. Our third word, and this is an interesting one, Blizzitant. So that means being selfish or all wrapped up in yourself. Like, why are you being so blizzitant? This is great. I can use all of these new words in so many situations. Thanks. You heard it here first on Alyssa's Advice. You gonna wear that thing the whole time? Of course. Helps me think. Help me come up with this. That's not a Bible ink. That's a picture of a horse. I think we should get one to ride to work. Good luck. I've been down that road and it ends in disappointment. I was thinking we'd use this story about Peter and John to encourage Stella. Hmm, let's check it out. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. Bye. 
Look is alive. Peter and John were going to the temple one afternoon to pray when they saw a man who had never been able to walk in his whole life. Each day, the man sat at the temple gate begging people for money. Can you spare any money for a poor man who can't walk? I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I have something even better. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. Peter helped the man stand up. As he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed. The man began walking, leaping, and praising God. When the people saw this, they were amazed. People of Israel, why are you so surprised? Why are you staring at us as though we did this all by ourselves? God did this so that everyone can know the power of His Son, Jesus. Many people believed what Peter and John said, and they decided to become followers of Jesus too. Some Jewish leaders became bothered by Peter and John's teaching. They arrested Peter and John and had them put in jail until morning. The next day, they brought Peter and John to a large group of the men who ruled the whole kingdom. Even the high priest was there. By what power or in whose name did you heal that man? Rulers and elders of our people, are you holding us captive and asking us these questions because we've healed a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me be clear. The powerful name of Jesus healed this man. You crucified Jesus, but God raised him from the dead. Believing in Jesus and following him is the only way to be saved. There is no other way. The rulers were amazed by Peter and John's boldness. They knew Peter and John had been with Jesus. And since everyone could see with their own eyes that the man who couldn't walk was now healed, there was nothing they could do. Still, they tried to find a way to stop Peter and John. Fine, we will let you go. But you aren't allowed to ever speak or teach about Jesus ever again. But Peter and John refused. Do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? <laughs> no way. We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. The council tried to scare Peter and John into staying quiet about Jesus, but it didn't work. Finally, they let Peter and John go. They couldn't punish them without making the crowd angry. After all, everyone was praising God for healing a man who had never been able to walk. Peter and John didn't lose their excitement about Jesus, even when people threatened them. I really like this story. It starts with a miracle, a miracle that only God could do. And it shows that God's power is what grabs people's attention. They made disciples by sharing what they knew and praying for those who wouldn't listen. This will show Stella that she can trust God's power and His timing. Hey, are you guys almost done in here? I think so. Jumbo. Do what now? That's totally jumbo. Do you need to sit down, Rodney? Well, I need to use this space, but I didn't want to be blizzarding about it. I think he suffered a head injury. Call a medic. Cool words. Words? Sounds like a cry for help. Alyssa said them on our podcast. Everybody's saying them. Teach me. Hey, Doc, can you let me know when you're done with the computer? I have a new podcast I want to upload. Yeah. I heard Rodney trying out a bunch of new words. <gasps> That's jumbo. It's great having so many followers. I think it's so cool that people are so inspired by what you have to say. You're impacting a lot of people, at least around here. Yeah, the amount of listeners started out small, but it's growing quickly. Just like Jesus started with 12 disciples before he went worldwide. <laughs> this is just a podcast. I'm not trying to be Jesus. But you're making disciples. People listen to what you're excited about, and then they'll tell their friends, and then they'll tell their friends, and pretty soon everyone is wearing cowboy hats just because you said so. I guess you're right. I wasn't really thinking about who I was leading. I was just talking about stuff that I liked. People are following your example. It's kind of like this verse link I found for our friend Stella. It's from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 1. We can say it like this. Okay. 1 Corinthians 11, 1. 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Follow my example. Follow my example. Just as I follow the example of Christ. Just as I follow the example of Christ. 
Stella has a friend who always says no when she invites her to church. This first link will show her if we live like Jesus, it might help other people want to follow Him too. Our friends are watching and listening to us. Setting a good example could help other followers of Jesus learn to be better disciples too. We can sharpen each other. You get it. I don't need to tell you this stuff. You're already good at telling people about Jesus. I don't know. Lately I've just been so... blizzitant. I have no idea what that means. So, why are we re-recording this episode? I thought the last one we did was totes jumbo. It was. It's just, I was talking to Dot and I realized I've been leaving out something really important in these podcast episodes. Is it advice about snack foods? Because I'd really love to know what you think about snack foods. No. I didn't realize how many people I was influencing with Alyssa's advice. My advice. I don't only want to lead people to cool hats or hip words. I want people to hear about my friendship with God when they listen to me. I like that. Taking it to the next level. I want the people listening to learn about Jesus and know Him. Jesus helps His disciples make more disciples. That's good. Jesus helps His disciples make more disciples. You could totally use that in the podcast. Exactly. So, what do you say we re-record this episode? Same thing, except with an emphasis on discipleship. Sounds awesome. <laughs> oh, and by the way, the whole thing with that snack food. Have you heard about making s'mores, except with a chocolate graham cracker? No. Tell me all about it. Well, I mean, that was basically it. What's wrong, Mike? Your head a little itchy? Nope, not at all. You wish you could take it off, don't you? Nope. It's comfortable and stylish, not itchy at all. Did you guys find all the links you needed for your field office call? Almost. We just need a point link. I uploaded one that I think might work for your friend Stella. Great. Would you like to help me make the connection transmission? I'd love to. Loving this hat! I actually just found out that cowboy hats are out. <sighs> Finally! So basically what I learned is don't ever try to ride a moose. It doesn't really work. Oh, hey, look. It looks like Connect HQ is ready for connection transmission. Let's see what answer they found for you. Hi, Stella. My name is Dot. And I'm Alyssa. We found an answer for your great question. The Bible tells us this in the book of 1 Corinthians. Say it with us like this. 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Follow my example, just as I follow the example of Christ. When we say Christ, we mean Jesus. And when you follow His example, it can teach the people around you how to be disciples. Peter and John couldn't stop sharing their excitement for Jesus. Sometimes you might feel this way too. Like how it's so exciting being a disciple of Jesus that you want other people to be disciples too. If people don't listen or tell you to stop, keep living as a great example and trust that God can do miracles. Your good example and God's power might be the only thing that gets their attention. Think about who you follow. Is it Jesus' example or someone else's? And think about who you lead. Whether or not you know it, people are watching what you do. They listen to what you say and see if you really do follow what Jesus teaches. Remember, God's power is the only way for you to make disciples. You can't force them to go to church or yell at them. God uses your life, your example, and the choices you make to impact the people around you. It's not always fun or easy to make disciples. If you invite your friend to church and they say no, you can still set a great example for them. It's not your fault if someone doesn't want to follow Jesus. Just continue to pray for them and trust God's power to work in their life. You can't do it with just a good example. You need Jesus. Jesus helps his disciples make more disciples. Thanks for the great question, Stella. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Thanks, Connect HQ. God sent his son, Jesus. Because he loved us so much, Jesus chose to die for us. Now all of our sins can be forgiven. It all begins when we make Jesus the leader of our life. And you can do that. Just remember your ABCs. A. Admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. 
B. Believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C. Choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. I'm so thankful for all of you who watch us every week. I hope that you'll choose Jesus, get to know how much He loves you, and choose every day to love Him back.